阿弥陀，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。Okay. Um, trees and response and retributions. Uh, today we're going to end the part eight here. I'm adding this prematurely because we want to move on to part nine straight away. Uh, first half of it. Uh, part eight last week we talked quite in detail about this particular sentence on the importance of institutions and uh, overturning existing. St- I mean, the importance of having a system in place so that the majority of the society can have a more uh, peaceful, predictable, uh, stable kind of a uh, outcome. Uh, because as you can see, when people trying to, um, if people do not uh, well thought and uh, be patient with the situations uh, of their society, and they Uh, getting too extreme, too over the top in their actions, uh, causing you know, riots, causing uh, a lot of um, uh, destruction to the people's uh, life and properties. Then you can obviously uh, witness this in the news nowadays, and since the ancient time and nowadays, that this uh, will will cause many people to suffer, and and people who instigate this will have to bear the consequences. Of causing this to happen, so why do we need to understand the importance of institution? Because we cannot have a proper functioning society without a set rules and regulations. And this going more in modern times is basically a management, a system in place to ensure everyone can contribute, contribute, uh, abide by the rules, understand, uh, you know, what's right, what's wrong in a. In a in a consensus way, and then only then we can have a, um, how to say, functioning uh, society because we can't expect everyone to self-regulate, uh, and that's one of the um, that's one of the unfortunate part of our uh, uh, Sahawo is we couldn't uh, expect everyone to 100% self-regulate because uh, we are we have greed, hatred, ignorance, so we go in deep in depth, right? Beyond just looking at it superficially, uh, so also um, people have uh, uh, people who instigate this uh, kind of um, causing troubles, causing uh, uncertainty in uh, in a society, in a country. Uh, be- mostly give uh, come out of uh, greed, you know, coveting someone else's resources, coveting someone else. Uh, Uh, achievements, you know, maybe their developments, uh, their their wealth and stuff like that. Um, it can be starting from family, you know, causing the family to break, bigger to you know a company. You know, this company is one functioning well. You sabotage it, stuff like that. To uh, other team, you know, maybe you are working in the same company. You causing trouble to other team, uh, you know, causing spreading gossip, spreading this uh, discord, a court. Uh, in between the, in between the clients, I mean, in between the team members, uh, you also causing a lot of, um, how to say, uh, unnecessary conflicts and stuff like that by you know instigating one again, pitting one against another. This also break the um, rule of uh, no, um, This is no uh, picking, uh, instigating uh, disharmony, discord in uh, uh, in between people. All right. That's not to confuse with being honest and being uh, open about what's wrong, what's what's the issues. We need to put it into the table, and sometimes you know we need to let go of our face and do it. And that's nothing wrong. That is uh, that is very healthy uh, in helping the system, helping the society to change, or whatever organization to change, improve the institution, improve the standards. These are needed. These are very important. What I'm trying to say here is malicious kind of mindset, very selfish, very um, self-centered kind of a mentality of um, doing things just because you want to gain some sort of a uh, upper hand against your rivals, or you know because that person is doing better than you, 
when one guy more you buy rent gong, basically you trying to uh, cause them to lose their job or lose their position, lose their prestige, uh, lose their respect, people's respect, uh, where they did none of what you said. So this is basically a crime and a, a, a very heinous act. It's not um, because that person has done something wrong. You expose it. That's that's another thing. But if this person has done nothing of that, and then we accuse them and all that, then this is malicious. Um, in this case, we don't want to go too far. In it. We just want to say uh, what we learned last week. Why we, why do we take such a long time? Is because when we understand, everyone has to work, uh, kind of abide by this kind of a, what we call social contract. Uh, this is a very common term used in. Uh, I think John Locke or something uh, in uh, political theories. The point of me using this kind of word is because when we have a social contract, we can have uh, kind of like a, a, a sort of a rule of law in a sense where everyone can um, like not worried. You know, someone's gonna overstep and someone's gonna uh, sabotage or um, getting too much out of it. Obviously, nothing is perfect. Um, those things has to change time to time, update time to time, but it has to be done in a way everyone is um, benefited, not you know causing one uncertainty after another, and then you know it goes downward spiral. And you can see very obvious in the um, Middle East and those regions, they get more and more disorder. Um, and it's a it's a very it's a very complicated topic, right? Like there is this. Um, talk of big evil, small evil, lesser evil, bigger evil. In a sense of, uh, if you overturn this person because his deed is heinous, you end up sabotaging the entire region because there's no one putting on a leash on this region. And it becomes a very lawless, kind of a wild, wild, wild west kind of mindset. And if the citizens were not, um, well, how to say, mold, melt together properly with a new form of social contract, something that can replace the previous order, then it will become what you see right nowadays, splintered groups. Obviously, not everyone's like that, because most people want to live in peace and, you know, try to you know, not to get stirred up by, you know, racially motivated, political motivated, or uh, wealth motivated um, stuff. They try to move on with their life. So therefore, we need to appreciate when we have actually um, have a relatively working. Of course, it's it's a it's a lot of improvements, but we have relatively functioning kind of a society uh, that that does not you know um, cost too much. Uh, does does not incur too much human cost, you know, cost of lives, cost of uh, wealth to 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 get things done. Uh, but. Uh, in our part, right, as a normal citizen and Buddhist, uh, our job is just to make sure, you know, we, you know, doesn't matter what other people did or what kind of people, you know, at the top, whether they um, rig the system or doing something uh, immoral, even though it's legal but immoral, irresponsible, just because the law says so doesn't mean they are right, you know, like uh, legalizing something some chemical compounds in the food that are not supposed to be there. Just because it does not harm, does not mean it doesn't have long-term consequences. All these things, you know, using uh, smart wording, smart legal terms to uh, find a loophole, gray areas. That's uh, that's something we uh, we understand as immoral, and e, e, because it harms the benefit, the majority of people for the sake of profits. Uh, they use the system. Uh, in a sense, for their own ends, those people also consider as transgression, transgression of this. So don't confuse. You know, we should not um, sabotage. I mean, we should not. Uh, how to say? We should not be blind to what's going on, right? Some some sabotage is very obvious, like outside foreign. Some sabotage is their own, your own people, your your the the people inside, where where they um, do not. Uh, use a very common goodwill kind of mindset. They uh, use the system for to further their ends, maybe to pass you know, in a lobby law, trying to pass something by throwing money into it 
and that law is actually harming majority of the people because of the senselessness. Those are people are sabotaging, right? They're overturning existing system. Those systems are intentionally, right, meant to help people to have a channel to, you know, uh, put those topics that affects daily lives of the citizen in the public. But because of this greedy uh, corporations, individuals, or greedy uh, or um, um, money motivated or um, politically motivated, I want to get rid of my rivals. So everything my rivals suggest should always be overthrown. That kind of extreme mindset, right? It's no better than foreign sabotage. That's entirely defeating the system. In a way, you're actually destroying the whole point of the system in place. Rule of law, constitution, stuff like that, having minority consent. Because those things are meant to allow, how to say, majority to have uh, a say, also protecting minority. At the same time, whatever side of politics spectrum to give a little bit of, um, have a freedom, right? It doesn't have to be left or right or up and down. It, has, it can be in the middle, it can be uh, topic A can work together, topic B we are against each other, topic C we can we can find a solution, topic D we can actually a, B, uh, fight it out properly in vote. Something like that, you know, flexibility. So if it has been perverted to, you know, serve the purpose of people who has more lawyers, who has uh, more uh, power of words at their side, it's it's when one gui mo yi bai ren gong. You are sabotaging the system in a way that it's not serving its purpose anymore. It's not making it fair enough for large amount of people. Making very, very, very skewed towards people who has rich, deep access to information, to legal resources, to all these people, and you know, disadvantaging other people because of your own bubble, your own worldview overrides maybe 80% of the world view. And, and that's a very unfortunate thing that is happening in a different degree around the world. But there is one part of the world that happens really seriously. So this, this, this is also committing this kind of trespassing because you're hurting the society. So I'm going very nuanced now. Not just simply follow the rule, obey the law, don't break the traffics. Those are, those are common sense, right? I don't think we need to talk about this too much in here. What we need to talk about is the intention as well, right? If the intention is, um, remember the whole this, this institution, whatever system that is, custom procedure, they are done in collective in the sense of everyone stands together living in the same patch of land. They're trying to agree upon something so that they can um, live in a relative peace, you know, not end up with war, not end up with, uh, you know, tribal hatred and all this stuff. They're trying to overcome that, you know, with this consensus. Custom is formed because of that, you know, from this rock, this don't ha um, this tribe to that tribe, they have a custom and they have a pact, they have the alliance, stuff like that. And, you know, maybe, you know, war, uncertainty, and then going back to the alliance, I I'm oversimplifying it, doing it unjust, but but this, this kind of a cycle keep happening and it forms into a procedures, into law. Right. Remember, every regu regulation is written in blood. Those are experience of the past. Some of them should be outdated. Some of them is um, because they experienced how painful it is to have war or how painful it is to have, you know, people killing each other uh, um, in a civilian settings. You know, the riot, racial riot, or you know, mob riot. So those things were put in place so that to prevent this kind of um, riot, uh, like a uh, one ethnic group against another ethnic group. All right. So there, there are nuances on this. All right. This is wisdom. This we need to learn about this wisdom. Um, that's why Tai Shanghai Pain is not just talking about cause and effect, as in this life, next life. We can talk about current event. You know how this tribe and this group and that group fight each other. So what is the grievances that was not un, that was not uh, work it out. So we when, when we have this system in place, it's just to make sure everyone at least have a place to um, voice their concern so that, you know, there is a, if enough concern is gathered, that means enough
voice or political power. Politics is a matter of affairs of the public in a sense. Everyone have that will to change something or ask for something and that movement is enough. So it will put on the table agenda for people who are supposed to represent them to talk about it. Um, this is how it works. Even in Buddhism, we also have practicing the same thing. Like there, there's a saying in Sangha, right? The Sangha is the first communist in the world. But he also, the council of the Sangha, people who form the council of the Buddhist organization, as in the Buddhist group, monk group, or monk, lay, monk or lay, doesn't have to be monk, sorry, uh, is, where, is also one of the earliest democratic uh, institution. Everyone has to vote upon certain thing that relates to the temple. All right? There is one person, one vote in a sense. But all the prophets or anything, the alms, you know, they... Like in old days and even in Buddha's time, because we're talking about Buddha's story as well. Buddha time, the alms that Buddha has asked uh, around the places, you know, the rule is that you don't just, if you've got more alms, obviously when Buddha go and ask for alms, everyone will give him three bowls of rice and not just normal rice, premium plus plus rice that only is meant for kings. It's very obvious. You will do that. Obviously, people who follow his entourage might be getting the good one. And then the other student, lesser, lesser known, might get normal rice and then only two bowls with lesser dishes. So what they do to make it fair, right, is every time they go back, just because you get more bowl of rice doesn't mean that you can immediately eat more stuff. No, they put it in the whole pot, mix it together, doesn't matter what taste they are. They don't dish it, they don't spread it out into a, a, a fish. Back then there's no vegetarian, right? Buddhism, vegetarian just small history um, interlude. Vegetarian in Buddhism is actually practiced properly in China. And it's like later part. So the original Buddhism, they don't pick, say, vegetarian or not. They are like, they eat what they were given. Of course, they don't hunt, they don't butcher. That's, that's a no-no. That's the first precept, no killing. So um, they were taking what they were eaten and then they put everything in one pot. And it's India, right? They have so many beautiful spices. So they just put spices in it, salt or whatever, cook it in one chunk. There is even like um, back in early 2000, 2010s, there is a group of Sangha in China that they actually follow which means the um, practice of, um, it's like ascetism, light. Like Buddha's, as a, when he, before he became Buddha, he practiced extreme ascetism where he tortured the body just to get sort of just to find a way to get enlightenment but this one is not extreme not that extreme it's still very hard but they will still eat per day you know like all this i think you witnessed that in the in the houston uh, dharma uh, session uh, the retreat the uh, eight precepts right those are model after the precepts the monk has so going back to the point in, in buddhism the, the sangha which is the group of uh, coll uh, council of monks uh, in, in, in Buddhist. Uh, originally, it means that. It also means lay Buddhist, but in the, in the narrow, direct sense, literal sense, Sangha has a um, group of monks together, and they ask for alms, they throw everything in one pot, and then everything was cooked together, and then they spread it evenly to everyone. And they cannot, like, they cannot look at the food and say, oh, this is tasty or not tasty. The rule is that they will always look uh they look at the food, but not like three seconds or something. It's very strict. They just eat. And when they eat, they cannot pick. They cannot say, this is too sour. This is not sour enough. This is this is that. Obviously, health reason is different. That's fair. But if it's your preference, no. Because you're supposed to liberate yourself from the five skandhas, which is, you know, you know, physical form, you know, the body, all the senses, your feeling, your um, thought, your um, uh, the mental activity, you know, the the endless stream of thoughts means number four. Number five is your uh, consciousness, you know, not getting bound by this. So this is one of the practice. So it's very in, very detailed. Back to the point here in relation to this, those systems were set up to achieve the goal of getting enlightenment. But at the same time, it's also a group of people. And it's not just five people like you and me and and, 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 and another three person. It's 2,500 people with him every day. 
it's not a small model. It can be a small company, right? So how did he manage that every single day? Hence, he has to set up Sangha, precepts, a precepts, a rules that everyone follow. First person who would do that is himself, Buddha. He do that, everyone already seen that for a few months before he opened his mouth and said, this is what we should do. Of course, everyone will follow. Buddha already show you one by one, hand to hand, every single day he do that. He didn't just think about it, trying to control you and then put some restriction. He do that because he understand you need this for enlightenment. So in, even in Buddha Sangha, we also have rules. In China, same thing. Like we mentioned it last week, like Bai Zhang Qi, Venerable Master Bai Zhang, you know, Master Bai Zhang. Uh, he was one of the, um, I think, Ri Zhong, which is the school of precepts. And what he learned is that when he, of course, all monks have to learn Buddha's precepts, the OGs, the originals. But then you need to adapt to this new environment where now you have a patch of land instead of going out asking for food. So they have a system where they build up, um, you know, temples, monastery, a, a collective of uh, make up sh a shift uh, a home around it, right? Of course, imperial support, maybe not to every single temple, but majority of the temple, big temples, and they all collectively live together. Now you need a rule. So he codified a set of rule. We call it the rule of um, purity. You know, this this rule is supposed to remain uh, maintain the purity, the sanctity of the of the sangha, so that everyone have a peace of mind, put their heart on the path of enlightenment, rather than a, you eat more apples than me, you have more money than me, you wear better robes than me. Same thing. They're still trying to achieve the same thing Buddha trying to do. So. Back in our world, worldly matter, same thing. We're just trying to achieve some sort of, you know, those disadvantaged people has at least a bit of support. And disadvantaged people, we're able to, to bear more burden because they are living well, right? Indulging in... So this is education, right? If we only talk about technical stuff and talk about, you know, science, mathematics, um, those hardwares, but you never give them a proper software, it becomes a shell. It, it functions like a machine, but you have no soul. You know, what is soul? Love, taking care of one another. Right? The community, brotherhood. Those things are gone. Yeah, because everyone's like a machine going to work every day just to get money for the sake of getting more money. Just to buy a bigger, better, newer version of Lamborghini. Of course, that is not the case to... 90% of people. Everyone's trying to get by so that they can support their family. Trying to support their you know, lifestyle in a sense. That's fair, but that's why we have a system where you you have a leeway to enjoy it and then you also need to contribute. So this is why it needs to be it's a com society kind of thing. So we, we respect this because we respect the wish of the society, wish of the people, collective wish of people to have a peaceful coexistence to have a fair dealings with conflicts because we cannot, um, in all honesty, say that we have no faults. People do mistakes, sometimes he, uh, uh, crimes. That's why we need to do it properly. And it has to come from education perspective. So all these things, these are collective wish, like universal wish. So that's why we have this system in place. It should be from this point of view. Of course, on top of that, there are personal desires to control, to get more power. And if you're in a different platform of political system, you may be able, able to one person dictate everything. That's another problem. But doesn't matter what kind of form it is, it cannot leave the consensus of the majority. Because in the end of the day, you need to rely on them. Uh, so in the um, system, we need to learn about, you know, we need to maintain our, uh, we need to understand, like, cannot be too arrogant, cannot be too uh, self absorbed so cocooned into some sort of, like I say, your own bubble. And and um, in, it's supposed to be, how to say, um, that's why when you understand why, when you understand how important it is and consequences of not having a solid uh, pact in between citizens or the community or the 
people in the organization to protect, improve the system, right? Being honest, open, but also, you know, not breaching the rules just because, you know, you, de- you feel more superior than other people. Those things need to be learned and um, normal people will usually do it in a pace that are uh, understandably, you know, everyone understand why this is not right and we're trying to fix that and then it takes time to do it. So, so um, we still need to root for, abide by the rules because abide by the rules helps us to have a peace of mind. So we don't have to predict what well, this person might be, might not be. We understand that this will be dealt with in due time. Maybe there is a loophole, we can fix it. So that's, that's, um, that's the mindset we need to have, you know, be patient and we also need to have, you know, voice out concerns, but be patient. Don't, um, or would, uh, how do you say, don't allow, to, you know, too much pride in it. It becomes too, too self-centered and then you forgot, you know, you also have end up causing the trouble of others as well. Um, just because you have your own set of ideology and then you impose, you become the very person you despise in a way, right? So, so it has to have, it have to deal with patience. You have to deal with, you know, time, and also you can push for it, but always do it right, right? So there's this nuances in there. We need to appreciate right um but even buddhist precepts there are times you need to as long as it's, it's not intentional you understand kaiju fun you know you need to open sometimes you need to open up these precepts because of the situation and then zhe i'm not so sure zhe means you need to hold it hold the line that means you cannot allow it to uh, you cannot commit this um error and then fun means you commit it maybe one time or uh, um, um, not, not 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 intentionally or um, smaller mistakes just like law so it's, it's time to relax it's time to cons- restrict as long as it, it, it reaches the goal of for for Buddhism is in is to reach the goal of you know purifying your mind so that you are giving rise to samadhi, hence you have wisdom, hence you're able to get one step closer to enlightenment. And in your daily life, you you know, have a more peace of mind and um, not breaching the worldly rules, not breaching the precepts, not causing harm to other people. There's a whole point of five precepts, it's just not causing harm to other people in different ways, physical way, killing, no killing, you know, property, the livelihood, no stealing. They are, uh, how to say, their purity, they are, uh, how to say, they are dignity, right? Mm. Means no sexual misconduct, self dignity and other people's dignity, two sides. Uh, num- and then harmonious coexistence between people, harmonious um, existence between everyone, so that everyone can talk it out, even have problems, they can talk it out in peace because it's well intentioned. So no lying, no double mouth. That means instigating discord between two parties. And then, you know, no swearing. You know, it hurts people if you swear it. Of course, I, I'm i one of the crime, uh, I'm one of the prisoner of this, I'm a criminal of this as well. Um, sometimes it's this emotion that comes out, that's why I need to work on this. And then no... Um, there's ergo chi and no uh, huayin chao yu, uh, no flowery language, language that has no substance uh, that confuse people and uh, deceitful, you know, in a way. Be honest, be true, be earnest. Uh, you can have a joke, but not at the expense of other people or not um, personally attacking people. Depends on different relationship. Okay, let's not go too much. So, so that's the point. Uh, all right so if we understand these uh yeah let's move on 
To damage or render unusable tools of trade and means of production of other people. Yep. Basically, you making them unable to survive. Um, you know, people need your tools that to perform their duty and their job, and um, to do that to them is basically cutting down their uh, options to survive. Uh, and why would someone do that, right? Why would someone wants to? Um, do that. Greed, maybe. Jealousy, maybe. Right? Always um, think about if someone do that to you, what will you do? Right? If you are, if you're a business owner, someone just, you know, stealing money from you or uh, stealing, you know, or causing problem in front of your shop front, would you feel, you know, intentionally, unintentionally? Right? And of course, these are um, yeah. I'll leave it there. Not much to go with. Go on with on this one. Um, you know, you don't want to. You don't want people to do this to you. You don't do it to other people. Um, damage or render unusable the tools of trade. 损人器物以穷人用 yeah, pretty much that's it. So we move on to part nine today. Part nine talks about concealed unwholesome deeds. So it, it's like you, there's a pattern here. Part eight is blatantly committing evil deeds. So you just do it in the, in the public. So all this is part of the part eight. You do it in open, you know, everyone can see it, uh, causing chaos, uh, breaking families, uh, hurting people's property and lives, uh, you know, upsetting the order that people rely on to have a peaceful life. Um, and then the um, damaging people's goods that they rely on for so, uh, for trade to, to make, live, make a living out of it. Now this part nine, uh, Consume Unwholesome Deeds, uh, it's the other way around. People cannot see it. Maybe it's not in action, maybe in thoughts. You know, that mind, that, 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 that piece of um, that intention, um, that, that attitude, that gesture, something is not obvious. So the first one is straight away. 见他荣贵，愿他流贬；见他富有，愿他破散。Now, when you see someone rich, 荣贵 I'm sorry, esteem, 荣贵 rich, 富有 right? And then you wish them the opposite, you know, like, hey, I wish you impoverished, impoverished, you know, I wish you losing all your stocks. So that's, there's no need for that, right? If you understand laws of karma, we are, even that person is not really a respectable person, you know. You understand law of karma, you just simply reaping what he's sold. It's just matter in the past that you might not see. It doesn't have to be past life. It can be maybe when he started, he was still very humble, very earnest, and maybe they change in the mid in midway. But he still did his job, right? Disgrace, you know. You want someone esteemed and respected to be disgraced. To be honest, this this is mostly as well like jealousy in 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 in, in, uh, in at work. Um, there is a there is a saying here. Uh, 凡人荣贵皆非偶然，皆其稀有善缘，乃值得本。更其祖宗积德，乃能如是。见之者，当起追慕之心，非慕其荣贵，慕实追慕前其其前修也。All exactly what we're talking about. When we see someone rich and esteem, right? We should not just stuck sucked in with their um. Achievements. That's just results. How do you get to the results? There's no course. There's no process. How do you get the results? You understand the process, then you respect the process it takes to get to where this person is today. All right. Um, this, uh, you know, jealousy is born because of ignorance. Literally ignorance. There's no. There's no understanding of how this works. We only see it in a very superficial, narrow. Human esque mindset, which is what? What are we? A little ant in a place called Earth. 
which is a ball of rock, in comparison to Milky Earth, we're not even a speck of dust. Even Buddha compare our, our world a dust compared to bigger world. Obviously, we also as big as the universe compared to the microbiologies, like this. This is the scale thing. So back to the point right now. You know, we're such a narrow mindset. Uh, never have exposed to these teachings, uh, and allowing and and pre, you know, preconditioned with all these um, pre-existing problems of hatred, ignorance, greed, arrogance, uh, doubt. You know, Tanzan Zi Man. You know, uh, how can one not? Um, how can one have a peace of mind? If the person is so troubled by this. How can this person have a positive energy to attract something like wealth or respect? Because their conduct is not there anymore. Because their mind is already muddled, right? Um, to get rich, to get esteem, you know, to get uh, esteem status, prestigious status, to get wealthy, to get you know wealth that can rival nations. Those are always a result of the past accumulation. It can be um, of many lifetime of accumulation, right? Um, sometimes you can see someone rely on daddy's money to, to get by. That means he also has cultivated that kind of wealth in the past. And not everyone is always ill-mannered if they were educated properly. You know, if they were exposed to this teaching, they will always understand, appreciate what they have. If the parents are doing good example, you know, being generous, being able to um, appreciate what they have and tell stories to children. Hey, how hard it, this wealth came to, you know, what are the process his parents or ancestors or grandparents have to go through to set up a business like this that earns so much wealth, right? So this is always education thing, right? Yes, now we know there's cause and effect, but how do we make sure that a uh, young generation that inherits this kind of wealth is still or is it able to hold it, able to have well mannered. This needs to be taught by example, not just talking. It can be talking as well. You know, give them a story, how it came by, how the wealth came by, and 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 let them expose to different segments of the world, not just from their, you know, rich bubble. Uh, open up, but this one from the perspective of people who witness people like this. You know, oh, I'm so rich or wealthy, I wish you know, it disgraced and anything. They don't understand cause and effect. If you have that kind of mindset on other people, you are not, you're a person who has no inclinations towards this kind of thing. You're literally rejecting yourself, right? Instead of, you know, wanting to learn the process of getting there. Like, you want the wealth, right? You need to learn the process, how to get to the wealth. Understand, process can be conditioned. Like some people say, oh, I also, you know, open up a startup tech company like Bill Gates. Why am I not Bill Gates? It takes timing and everything, right? It, there, there's a timing, there's all this stuff. So how do I get this timing and stuff, right? So those are conditions, those are not costs. The cost is something you can't see in a past life. Someone with that kind of wealth cannot be done in one life unless it's a huge deal. It has many, many lives of accumulation of giving, of wealth, giving of uh, volunteering, their own energy, giving of um, wisdom, giving of um, fearlessness, right? So in terms of wealth, there's two kinds of giving. Giving of wealth, basically you give material assistance to people who need it. You give, set up a facilities, infrastructures that people need it, you know, bridge, uh, whatever, workshops, stuff like that. They need to build up their stuff you're also giving. You need to give in order to get. So that person has done that many, many lifetime. And now they're just simply reaping the rewards. That's it. And they are still having that positive attitude, wanting to do stuff. It's very important. You can have a lot of wealth in your, in your um, potential uh, coffer, but you, if you're not willing to work on it, you will not get it. Some people don't have to work on it. The money just fall into the lap. But that's because they work very extra hard in the past. So they don't have to work that hard in this life. I understand this mechanism, then we should be at peace. Even I'm poor, living by the streets, begging for money, I'm at peace. Because I understand these rules. 
And now if I follow the rules by not, you know, stealing, by not committing this kind of uh, petty crimes, you know, trying to steal people's $100, $50, $10, just for the sake of it. And I, you know, even when I'm poor, I have my own dignity, and my own bottom line. I live with an honorable, noble mindset. Of course, you know, there are communities with compassion to people to help each other as well. And even when I'm poor, I'm willing to spread half of my food to other people. Like, you, you can see the experiment, like social experiment, where people see that these young, uh, these um, homeless people, even they are given, say, one meal, and they saw other people asking for you know, some help, uh, some, some food, he is willing to give half of it to other people. Because he has been through this pain of, you know, not getting existence from other people, he does not want other people to do the same. How can these people not have prestige and wealth later in their life, right? If not next life. And having prestige and wealth does not necessarily translate to driving Lamborghini or Mustang or, and they have a huge mansion served by uh, many people. No, it, it, it can also mean that you, you have what you need at a moment notice, um, at, 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 at your disposal. So that's very important to understand. All right. That means you might not living lavishly, but you have what you need when you need it. Those are wealth. This is, this is called wealth. Things flows to you at you wish, as you wished. You have the resources to get what you need. So smart way of doing it is when you have the resources to get what you need, you also use that resource to give what other people need. And this circulates around. And this is how the wealthy people continues to have wealthy pe wealth as well. They understand, in a way, the importance of giving. Right? Of course, the return will depend on how pure their intention is. That means how, how, um, how less their greed of wanting more is. If they just genuinely want to give, they give without thinking about it. Give with respect, with dignity, understanding, respecting dignity of other people who received. Then, of course, they, they will maintain their wealth. They will maintain that. There's input, there's output, right? It keeps going. So, so now, when we look at this, you know, people who bribed, corrupted, they're still living well. You know, people who go on a dodgy route, tax evasion, or doing something that, uh, you know, not really good because they are powerful and rich. But we feel angry, we feel pissed, we feel like these people should be punished. But yet they are well and they are there. Why? Because they have so many wealth, so many um, good deeds they did for others. And, and they are reaping it right now. They are, of course, because of their unwholesome deeds, they bribe, you know, they're doing things out of the normal way. They will discount their own wealth. It becomes 20% discount of their own wealth. This is a discount no one wants. They're supposed to get 20 million. Now they only get 2 million. It's still 2 million that most people cannot imagine of getting it, including this book guy. So mm -hmm. this is why wealth is, um, it's, a, it's an ongoing thing. If you do it right, and if you uh, curb the greed, understand, you know, I am very blessed to have this position, to have in this position to do what I'm doing and still live comfortably. I'm now starting to give. I don't want to think about another zero in my account. You know, maybe instead of sitting on a hundred dollar cushion, now I'm sitting on a one thousand dollar cushion. That's the only thing. It's still the same, but it's still the same body. What's the difference? Um, at that stage, it's supposed to be giving out, All right? Some sometimes people living comfortably. You know, they have power, they have position, they have wealth, they have respect of the community, and if they're still allowing that kind of Read to overtake it. Like, oh, I want to add more zero because I want to finance more stuff. It's it's very sad, you know, such a waste of time. All this lifetime of hard work end up with these deeds. So when you understand that karma and what they did in aftermath, they will be punished. 
they will be, uh, you know, they will be punished to a life of servitude in the sense of maybe reborn as animal or poor. Maybe in the later part of their life, they impoverished. They're losing all their funds and assets. People don't trust them anymore, etc., etc. Then you understand. So, of course, not many people can see that. They, sometimes they just die and you can't see what's next, you know. But whatever goes around will comes around. And if they, you know, like I say, corrupted one million, they will need to pay one million plus deposits for every single person of the that he has um, called out the money from, you know, um, hoarded the money from. So, yeah. If you do not have that much wealth, even you bribe one cent, you will get caught out. <laughs> so we already talked about the how how do we accumulate wealth, but in general, the fortune. How do we cultivate fortune? Buddha has taught us as well. There are three kinds of fortune. Place to cultivate fortune. The first one is our family, of our parents. Tian. So this is the grounds, foundation, fertile grounds of cultivate our good fortunes. Uh, not just money, but in many ways, you know, uh, f being, you know, respect, gratitude to us, our parents, because of the gratitude, you naturally want to do things to help them, right? So, both physically, mentally, keep them happy, be be there for them. So, those people who are willing to take care of their parents, love their parents, uh, you know, um, help them. If we Buddhists help them to understand Dharma. So that they are peace, no fear of death and stuff. This is number one. You know, everyone can do it. Most people can do it. You know, if not, if someone doesn't have parents in living, your guardians, your elders that take care of you, they are like your parents. Number two is people who. Uh, number two is the 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 triple gem, Dhamma Buddha Dhamma Sangha. So this. Fertile ground for good cultivating good fortune is called the um, plot of uh, the um, respect. The plot of respect. The first one is plot of gratitude. So, farming crops, farming plots. Sorry, jing en tian, jing tian. So this, the 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 plot of respect means this is this this place where you can farm your good fortune. You farm from a heart of respect towards. The teacher, basically. Buddha Dhamma Sangha represents the teacher. And remember, Buddha Dhamma Sangha refers to the core essence of it, not the image. You know, you don't just walk to a monk and just offer. That is also a good way to start. But that is not the point of um, taking refuge in Buddha Dhamma Sangha. The whole point of taking refuge in Buddha Dhamma Sangha is to take refuge in your True nature, your purest nature. That means you have to go back to your purest nature, not polluted by all these things, by all these, um, uh, what you see, what you hear, what you think, you know. And it takes time to get there. Dharma as well, you know. Dharma is not just sutra. Sutra is just a way for you to get into the Dharma. It's a tool. So what you need to do is to pay respect to the sutra because you pay respect to what sutra means. It means that a pathway to understand your true nature, to go back to your um, pure self. And then the last one is Sangha. You know, the Sangha is just a group of Buddhist cultivators head, headed by the monk, Bhikkhu, Bhikkhu Ni, you know, the, the monk and the nun. We, of course, need to pay respect to the monk. Why? Because they represent people who walk the path through the Dharma, to realize their own Buddhahood. So we understand that, we pay our respect to them because we also want to walk the path. They will show us the path, or they are example, show us how to do it. Without their example, it's a distant thing, we can't feel it. Even Dharma is here, we don't know how to do it in our current era. So with someone like Venerable Master Ching Kong, why do we respect him so much? Because he shows us the path in this current era. How do you get out of this? Right? And now you need to follow it. Pay respect is by following it. Not just giving flowers, giving fruits. Those are gestures, but they are not 
touching the core of it. Core of respect is actually following. Understand, meet problem, encounter it, get defeated a bit, and then come back and then understand better. That's how it works. Yeah. Buddhism is all about co um, essence. It's all about uh, substance, not just the form, not just the superficial uh, appearances. It's all about the substance, not the appearance. All right? Appearance is to remind you of what it means. If you're not taught on that way, we all become blindly worshipping things. That's not the point. Oh, that defeats the point of the word Buddha. Which is enlightened, awakened, right? Uh, yeah. And if we cultivate right, do it means that if as long as we appear respectful, is that enough? Appear, you know, taking care of my parents, like oh, give some money, buy some good stuff for them, is that enough? Or you know, yeah, is it enough? Is it enough to just appear respectful using respectful words, respectful gesture? I mean, for is that enough? No. If your mindset is to have anger towards them, because maybe they pointed out your weakness, pointed out your problems, or maybe they talk too long, then you already disrespect. In a sense, this is very, very not. This is very strict, right? Otherwise, we won't be here. We will be already uh, attain enlightenment. The problem we aren't attending anything close to that because we are first stealing that kind of mindset. You know that mindset of impatience, the mindset of anger, the mindset of um, you know indifference, ignorance. You know, when they ask for you help, you're indifferent towards them, or you feel annoyed even though you appear to you actually help them physically but you're mentally like oh, I don't want to do this annoying so and also towards teacher as well like towards your um, friend or instructors you know like they tell you to do one thing like maybe you name for something or you should practice this we don't take it seriously or we kind of not putting it in as number one those are really um, serious self-awareness on that part. Because if the teacher did their job, that's it. They're not liable for your um, success or failure in this path. They do their job, they're trying to point out the issues, and they have right not to say anything if you are not appearing as concentrating or actually um, taking their teaching seriously. right? If they see that you actually trying and fail or you're aware that you're not really serious about it they're still willing to help you that means they are very compassionate that's where compassionate buddha and bodhisattva came from they have every single right not to worry too much about us in a way of course from perspective of people who cultivate bodhisattva and buddha's path they cannot do that they always 100 percent tightly heart to heart to the people even that people that he's trying to save do not want to be safe. The heart is always there. Any moment of turning back towards the path of enlightenment, Buddha and Bodhisattva would be three steps ahead, ready for this person to come back. This is why their compassion is so touching. Some people cried right in the middle of Gong Xiu chanting because they can see, they can suddenly feel that, oh, this is why Buddha is here. This is why he set up all this system. And, and this is why he, he, he wants us to do this, you know, chanting Amitabha for, chanting this praising Buddha, the oath to the Buddha, Amitabha, Amitabha Chan. Stuff like this are reminding us. And this is, this is, this is those moments that we understand, oh, now I need to be more serious about my practice. Back then you would be like, yeah, I need to pay respect to the Buddha. And pay respect to the Buddha or to the parents means give them money, make them happy, uh, give them house, give them car. Buddha wise, uh, buy more um, fruits, buy more, uh, uh, donate to the temple. And then uh, every uh, first day and 15th day of the month, pray to the temple. That's it, buy. The rest of the time is my own time. That's good. That's a good way to start. It's better than nothing. Of course it's good. 
we're not we're not we're not ridiculing this this is good but problem is we need to go further you need to get more intense otherwise you will always stay in the front in in the surface level the the fortune and good fortune the merit you get is surf, superficial that means you are still bounded by greed hatred ignorance that means you will still cause hatred you towards other other towards you because you have that mindset you have attachment to self you have the um conflicting thoughts as well you have all this unresolved stuff inside just because you cultivate good deeds it does not help help you because you're not actually focusing on figuring it out and want to figure it out you can't figure it out is one thing but you want to figure it out you want to achieve perfect harmony in your mind and outside and and you want to resolve this tension this this conflicting mind you know this hatred this greed this craving this lust this this annoyance these frustrations this um say all the psychological a problem as well right that all humans experience but you aware that these things must not be it i cannot just stuck in this kind of emotions in my life i'm more than that so if you have that level of understanding and you seek help and you understand buddhism that level then you start to understand this is not just going to the temple lighting up incense and pray this is something i can get out so i could get something more out of this and i need to 100% dedicate to his teaching that's how you pay respect same goes for parents you know if i really want to help them i can't just buy house well, i mean of course you can buy house that's important and it's not easy i can't even do that right it's of course it's awesome you know you're able to let them live comfortably without fear and then you're doing a good job as a upstanding society member those number one steps always must be done i haven't even done it properly and i need to do it but then you also need to think about you know beyond this you, you can't just leave them like that you need to introduce the buddhism to them so that they can they can truly be at peace because no matter how well taken care they are you are not fully taken care of them until they willing to take up the name of amitabha and actually want to go to pure land or a path they they can confide in and peace of mind no fear of death no fear of sickness you haven't haven't done your job as a son or a daughter if we, until they actually have the affinity to i mean have have the wants to do it obviously it depends on their affinity to the buddha's path or the path of sages right it can be you know other religion as well but uh, from our perspective is buddhism of course we want them to align with that you know going to pure land or going to enlighten of course in this way pure land is the best way if buddha himself introduces his father at the end of his life his father's life at the death bed asking his son is there any way i can practice so that i can go to um a better place uh so i can attain enlightenment quickly and buddha say chan amitofo amitabha buddha chan amitabha buddha he himself introduced the best to his father that's obviously right you want the best way parents you always give the prestige most premium stuff to them so same goes for us so treat us as equal as his father so back to the point here is the um envy the rich uh, and esteem by wishing them impoverished and disgrace no um and then this is entirely opposite of that mindset right um and this has a practical effect it's not just um simply from perspective of on psychology and anything your life will be safe your um, your world will be much easier your way of seeing the world will be lighter you won't be as negative as worried like that in a sense you will be more positive more positive even things are going against your will or you have that resilience because you no longer stuck by this kind of you know helplessness so those kind of mindset right is uh, this core saying is also coming out of insecurities of that person helpless they focus too much on other people not them themselves 
if you focus on yourself and you work so hard to improve yourself, you don't have time to look at uh, someone, maybe your colleagues, or maybe your high school friends. Oh, now they are rich. Now they are getting order of merits from King Charles or whatever. Or they are a matter of honor, stuff like that. Um, you don't have time for that. You congratulate them. If you're smart, you pick up what, what makes them so well. They have to have some qualities that people want to work with them and pitch, I mean, put, you know, their trust, their business to them so that they, they this is connection things, right? People want to do deep business with you because you must have some quality that they want to see. doesn't matter what you know about them is negative or not, but they must have some part that is actually good that people willing to work. If you can't see that, then we fail. Right? We wasted our energy on looking at people's weakness. If we look at their weakness, we only use that as a cautionary tale, and then we move on. We don't get stuck into it. That's another thing. That's the right thing to do. The wrong thing is this one. Cursing people. Hope they broke up, uh, bankrupt. Hope they uh, be disgraced. You know, hope they... Uh, f uh, some scandals coming out of them. That's not right. right? If their attitude behavior has problem, we should instead hope they will meet someone that make their heart less cold, melt their heart, make them more compassionate. It might sound very cringy and stuff, but it is it is a good good thing to have, isn't it? Sometimes we need to have a certain level of uh, purity in our heart. People call naive. It's important to have that. Right? If if we all become cynical, become very bitter and become very negative and all like, you know, in the name of reality, which is not true. Reality can change. You know, can be bad and good. It's not always negative. So so this is something we need to really reflect on. Alright. Otherwise, whatever we do, we just follow the script. There's a saying like, if you build tens of uh, Master Li, which is um, teacher of Master Chen Kong, uh, Mr. Li, Li Pingan or Ju Si, he say that um, you know, if you build a temple and you wear something like a Buddhist um, uh, monk rope. You know, you appear as a monk, or people respect you, stuff like that. But if your mindset, your heart is not emulating the Buddha's action and deeds, you're not learning from your teacher, basically. It's useless. You will still go to whatever six realms you have, you, you whatever you should be going. Right? Like, you will still have to follow whatever the path you need to follow based on your karma, because you have not purified. Buddha and Bodhisattvas, their job is only two things, kai he si, right? It's to start the whole, you know, movement of changing your path towards better and ultimately enlightenment. And then si is showing you how to walk this path. So they start the path by walking himself and then he show you, instruct you in, in the name, in the form of sutra, how to do it? They record it as sutra. How to how to achieve what they achieve? That's their job. That's it. They're finished, and they they stay. How long they stay in this world depends on how long how earnest we are willing to learn. That's why Buddha only stay here for what forty five years, forty nine years, fifty years, plus his early time, eighty eighty years. That's how much we can get. He's supposed to stay about hundred years, according to some of the uh, I forgot where, but hundred each years, but he kind of like, Mara kind of whisper in his ear and say, oh, not much people will follow. Some people ignore it. Um, something like, you, could you go early? It's Mara. Mara being Mara. Um, and Buddha was like, uh, shed a, a, a drop of tears and then he go into Pari Nirvana. 20 years earlier than expected. So it's supposed to stay quite long, but maybe we are not learning properly. We are not our attitude is not good enough. Right? So their job is only these two. They have no other. They don't want wealth. They don't want 
fortune, they don't need that. They can conjure it out of their hand, literally. Because they have their merits, they have their fortunes. They don't need your wealth, they don't need the they don't need your um, respect. Of course we need to respect them, but they don't need your respect. They can appear as beggars, they can appear as anyone else, they can be invisible to you too. Why do they show up to you? It's because they only want to show you the path by themselves setting as example and tell you how hard it is, but doable. And how do you do it in your current era, your current technology, your current kind of a mindset? You know, right now we have one person who's showing us that, right? Master Ching Kong and his students. Same thing. So we too will be that person as well. In a lesser degree, doesn't matter. We can do how much we can do, and then we go back. And then we do it again and again and again and again and again. Right? In the Buddha story, I did mention Buddha has already appeared 8,000 times. I say it, it was mentioned in, I think it's Fa Hua Jing, in the, uh, um, Fa Hua Jing, I forgot the Sanskrit name, I'm so sorry. Flower Adornment Sutra is Hua Yan Jing. Fa Hua Jing is the Lotus. Sutra, I think. Um, anyway. Oh, back to this is... um. Yep, Faber Garland Sutra. That's Hua Yan Jing. I'm so sorry. Uh, all right, let's move on. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Belfan has invoke a mind in his power when he reached the zenith of his career, government career, you know, basically mayor of New York in a sense, governor of the best, richest, lushest, uh, lushed part of the country, right? It's like you, you're the mayor of New York or something, most prestigious office. Um, and then he has a thought back then in uh, Imperial China, right? Here is a thought. If I now has a right to adjust the tax rate, uh, I need to cut down the tax. And so he did that and allowing many people to have a relief, sense of relief. On the contrary, some people, you know, some modern countries, they increased the tax, grain tax, grain export quotas. From the from their current countries, causing famine of the people. That's entirely opposite. Just because they want to save face, in a way. Oh, I promise that I need to export six million tons of grain, even though they have a bad time, bad weather, they can't get as much tons. I'm still gonna take it from them to fulfill the quota, so that I can show to my faith to the international community i can do it so those are the problems uh, mindset is different one of them is focus on power prestige see they're chasing that thing but they're losing it they lose the respect of that thing the prestige is not something say i am wonderful so you all should think i'm wonderful or i can do this you should all think one would prestige is given a, a kind of an accolade is in everyone understand you as a person who genuinely do this. They respect you in the depth of their heart. They don't even think about it. It just touch them. They understand your action is really genuine, and they do it. They do give you that prestige, just a, as a, as a as a tool. It's not because of the medal that makes you prestigious, esteem, honorable. It's because of your actions that inspire your fellow people and your fellow human fellow uh, countrymen or whatever your fellow um, colleagues that they give you this medal so that people can set you as example because you are actually that good right and 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 understand how it works now we we, we can understand now i need to be that person the process that mindset the intention of this person is something i need to learn and the hard times they're willing to sacrifice their safe safety, well-being, comfort to help you know, this group of people in desperate need of help, right? And Delphine's situation, it's easy for him. He's having a good life. 
you just adjust the text reasonably so that they understand this year the the famine i mean the the crop harvest is 80 tons now i'm just going to take one fifth instead of one fourth a little bit lesser the emperor still have his food up back there you also have a good time getting the salary everyone have a good time as well that's that's how it should work not because you want to have a phase on the outside trying to reach the kpi that's not right all right uh i hope um this one remember like trying to tell us those blatant evil act is very bad but nothing is more bad than the conceal one because those things are sharper they are hiding Right? It's easy to see something's wrong if it's in the broad daylight. It's very hard if it's hidden beneath your shadows. Beneath your shadows of your conduct. You can't see anything. Uh, you can't see your own self without mirror. But these are more dangerous than the blatant evil deeds because that one can be in your face. You can see that it's a problem. But this one, you the mindset, that, that the anger, it's that moment of passion, misplaced passion, causing this that is not right so that's it for this uh, Taishan Gaim Pian as for the uh, recap of the Buddha story we will do that after we finish 10 times Amitofo because Hao has done that already and uh, I'll let him go I'll give a very short uh, recap because I forgot to record but this time we'll let's finish this one first properly with um, dedication of merits May the merits and virtues adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion, and leave the teachings for the rest of this life, then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amitofo. Amitofo. A mi to fo 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 A mi 